I was working with a group of fourth graders using the turning points model to have them write personal narratives. A fourth grade boy called me over and he said he was having trouble figuring out what the turning point was. I said, what's your story about? He said, hockey. I said, well, that's great. What about it? He said, well, I used to play on the street. Now I get to play in a real rink. I said, that's wonderful. What changed? He said, my father committed suicide. I got down closer to him and I said, you realize this isn't a hockey story? And he said, yes. I said, are you ready to tell this story? He said, I think so. We talked a little bit about the details and before I left him to work on the story, I asked him if he was ready to tell this story. He said he needed to. On Thursday night of the Turning Points model, when I spend a week in a school, we have a performance element and all the families are asked to come back to school to listen to the stories that the students had worked so hard on. He asked me that day if he could come and listen. He didn't want to read his story. I said, all of your friends need a good audience. It would be really wonderful if you came to listen. Way up in the bleachers with his mom, he listened to all the stories that night. And when I was about ready to close the night down, after everyone had heard some wonderful stories, his hand went up. I looked up and I said, is there one more story? He nodded his head. But he said, will you read it? And he brought the story down to me. I read the story out loud to friends and family. It was one of the most powerful stories I had ever heard written by a student so far. His mother was in tears. He had a great big smile on his face. And after the show was over, he came up and hugged me. And that was the last I saw of him. But it was a week later when his mother wrote me an email and said that that child had been in counseling for three years. But it wasn't until he wrote and had his story read, witnessed by friends and family, that he was able to move on from that event. Well, it was at a middle school in Michigan. I was scheduled to work with a group of eighth graders at 7.30 in the morning. I came in in all my enthusiasm and energy. They looked a little sleepy. We started to work on the Turning Points writing model. Halfway through the week, 7.30 in the morning, I met with them for the second time. One of the eighth graders in my group looked up at me and said, you either need to lay off the coffee or you're just one of us in an older body. I took that as a compliment. Now I watched that young man's progress all week long and he decided that he would choose the object to focus on in his story. The object that he chose was a wooden cross that he had made for his mother out of two pieces of wood that he had found out in a place that he liked to go explore behind his house. The entire story that week started to unfold. He put together the pieces of his journey to have Christ be a part of his life. By the end of the week when he performed his story, he was performing in front of all of the 7th and 8th graders in his school. You could have heard a pin drop in that room. It was a beautiful story called What's Love Got to Do With It? He figured out what Christ had to do with that. At the end of that, he came up and he gave me a great big hug and he thanked me for coming that week and he said he would never have put together what his spiritual beliefs were unless he had had a chance to write that story and tell it. I was in a high school. I had 30 students for two weeks. My job was to get them to identify a personal narrative, an event in their life, and write a story about it in final draft form by the end of our time together. A language teacher came up to me and told me about a student she had placed in my workshop, and she said, good luck with her. She's never written a story as long as I've been her teacher. That week, we started to tell our stories to each other. One day, I looked up at this group of 30 students, and I said, you know, I'll be here at lunchtime. If any of you want to come in and read your story to me, the way you have it so far, I'd be happy to listen. She came in at lunch that day with a 13-page paper that she had written. She was a student that dealt with a lot of learning disabilities. Things had been hard for her. There had been many obstacles. Her story was about how her life was like a river and that she had encountered many obstacles, but she had learned how to move around them. And after she got done reading that 13-page paper to me, she looked up and said, I never thought that my life made sense. Now I do. I asked her if I could borrow the paper. I took it to her teacher and showed her the work. Her teacher was very, very happy that not only had her student written a paper for the first time that year, but she had also figured out part of her life in that story as well. <laughs> 